A couple days ago, I posted a short video where I fixed my broken toilet seat by replacing the old cracked brackets with ones that I modeled in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed. And in that video, I took a couple of scaled pictures of the broken brackets and then imported them into Fusion to help with my modeling. Now, this technique of using canvases is something that I use all the time. It's a super useful tool in Fusion, but I got a lot of comments where people were asking how to do this. So I thought I would make a short video where I show my workflow. So here we go. As I mentioned, I took two photos of the bracket, one top view and one side view, each of them with a ruler in the frame. I took these with my iPhone, but the default iPhone image format is HEIC, and Fusion doesn't recognize this image format. So when I got these photos onto my computer, the first thing I had to do was convert these photos to JPEGs. So once I had the image in the proper format, I could insert them into Fusion as canvases. So what you want to do is go to the Insert menu and then click Canvas. So I'll go to Insert from my computer and then find where I saved these photos. And we'll just start with the top view. So I'll open that image, select the face on which I want to import it, and then you have the option to scale the photo. And at this point, we don't really have to worry about the exact scale. I'm just gonna make it big enough that I can work with the canvas. So once it's big enough, I'll click OK. So now you can see this top view of the bracket with the ruler in the frame. And as I mentioned, I tried to take a view from directly overhead to eliminate any perspective error. So now what I'm going to do is create a new sketch on the same plane. And I want to create two points along this ruler. And this will give me a reference distance. So I'll go to create point and I want to create two points that are basically as far apart as I can make them because that will give me a nice long line and a really accurate scale factor. So I'll zoom all the way in to the zero mark on the ruler and I could go all the way to five inches but at this area in the picture you can see that it's not really directly overhead. So there's likely a bit of perspective error and it wouldn't give me a super accurate distance so I'm going to create the second point right at the four inch mark. So now I can hit escape and I want to measure the distance between these two points. So I'll go to inspect, click on the first point, click on the second point, and within Fusion, the distance between these points is 4.841 inches. So now that I have this distance and I know that my true distance is four inches, I can now calculate my scale factor. So I'll go ahead and open up my calculator app. And what I want to do is divide the real distance four by that measured distance within Fusion. So I want to do four divided by 4.841. And that gives me 0 0.826. So I'll go ahead and minimize the calculator, get out of the measure command and finish this sketch. Now I can go back in the timeline to the canvas right click and go to edit feature and I want to take that scale factor the 0 0.826 and type that in where it says scale plane XY so I'm going to type in 0 0.826 click OK and now I just want to check my work so I'm going to edit this sketch that I did and now you'll see the points are no longer aligned with my canvas because I scaled the photo so I can just delete these points and I'm going to draw a line from the zero mark on the ruler to the four inch mark. I'll click and then I'll dimension this line and see that it is pretty much spot on 4.004 inches. And for something like this, that is plenty good enough for me. I'm going to finish this sketch. I don't need it anymore, so I can just delete it from the timeline. And now that I want to insert a perpendicular sketch, I'm going to move this one on the plane so that it's just in a more useful position. So I'm going to line up the screw hole right with the origin. There we go. Now I have a properly scaled reference photo in a proper position. 
So now what I want to do is insert my side view. So I'll do the same thing as before, insert canvas. I'll go to the side view. And now what I want to do is insert it on this vertical plane. Since I already scaled the first canvas, I know approximately how large this one has to be. So I'll scale it to about the right size, and I can see that I also have to rotate it by 90 degrees. But once I do that, if I look at my photo, I see that it is flipped in the wrong way. But Fusion is smart, so we can use the horizontal flip tool to turn it around, as well as the vertical flip tool, until we get it in the right orientation. So now I have this hole in the right position aligned with my vertical canvas. I'm just going to scale it and move it around by eye a little more, so I have to do a little less work later on. All right, so where it's sitting now is in a pretty good spot, so I'll hit OK. I'm going to go to just a right view and do the same thing as I did before. So I'll create a new sketch right on top of this canvas, create two points. I'll do one at zero. And as before, once I get to five inches, it's not quite right in front of the camera, so I'm only going to go to four inches. Just want to eliminate that perspective error. Hit Escape, click on Inspect, and see what the distance in Fusion is between these lines. So now I have 3.692 inches. If you're unsure about whether to do 3.692 divided by 4 or 4 divided by 3.692, one good thing to remember is that your scale factor is multiplied by the image. So since this image needs to get bigger, we know that our scale factor needs to be more than 1. So I'm going to do 4 divided by 3.692 and I get a scale factor of 1.083. So I'll finish this sketch, right click on the canvas, edit feature, and scale plane XY, I'm going to do 1.083. 1.083, click on OK. Now I can go back into my sketch, and as always, I just want to check my work and make sure I didn't mess up the numerator and the denominator. So I'll draw a line between 1 and 4, and it looks like we are right on once again. 4.005, I'm very happy with that for something like this. So I can just delete this sketch element since I don't need it anymore. And now the final thing we want to do is just make sure that our two images are aligned. Because if we want to sketch directly over these, we want them to be in the correct spot. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can do it by eye, you can do it exactly. And I think if we just created a couple points, that would be the easiest way to do it. So let's assume that I'm just going to leave my top view right where it is. So if I create a new sketch and just draw a point right where the bracket ends, I know that that's right where I want the beginning and end of my side view to fall. So I'll make two points finish the sketch, and if I change to my side view, I can see that those points are visible. And it takes some work panning around, but I can tell that I need to shift this side view forward a little bit. So I'm going to edit the feature, and actually what I'm going to do first is move this sketch earlier in the timeline so that those points still show up when I move the side view. So I'll right click, edit feature, and I'm just going to nudge it forward slightly until it looks nice and lined up. And I also think I need to change where it lies up and down. So I know that I want the bottom part of this bracket to lie right on the red line because that's where my top view lies. And I can see the point right there and I need to move it back so that the back edge falls right on that point. And the arrows aren't the most accurate way of moving things, so you might want to type in manually until it falls just so. And I think with that, it is pretty well aligned. 
So if I go into my finished bracket model, you can kind of see how I used this. So this is what I ended up with. And if I go and play the timeline, you can see literally my workflow. I extruded the top view where it was important, and then I switched to the side view, literally traced the outline, but for this inner hole, it needed to be an exact distance. So in that case, rather than trace it, I measured the diameter of that hole with my calipers and then inserted them as user parameters. And that's generally what I'll do with something like this, where the overall shape is what's most important. I might trace it as a canvas, but if I need to worry about exact distances, I'll measure those with my calipers, insert them as user parameters, and then find where those distances fall on top of my canvases. That way the piece is functional, but it also has approximately the right shape. So I hope that video was helpful in inserting canvases into Fusion and using them in your modeling. And let me know if there's any other Fusion tutorials that you would like to see. Thanks for watching and have a great day.